Welcome to Rewiring Health, the podcast designed to unlock the secrets of self-worth and healing your mind and body. Hello, I'm Dr. Kelly Kessler, physical therapist, transformation coach, and your host. I spent a whole lot of time and energy seeking out a sense of fulfillment through achievement and validation from others, only to feel exhausted, like it was never enough, and even worse, like I was never enough. The thing is, I didn't even know I was abandoning myself in the process of making sure I was meeting the needs of everyone and everything around me until it significantly impacted my health. Now I live life differently. I live with more peace, more joy, and more freedom in my mind and body. I've uncovered my self-worth, which has allowed me to live more authentically and in alignment with my true self. I see myself and my life through a whole new lens. Are you ready to stop abandoning yourself and begin living your life with more ease and purpose? Let's do this together. Life can hand you so many challenges, leaving you a choice to either focus on the loss of what you thought would be or to focus on what you can create and how you can reinvent yourself. If you're looking for inspiration and a story of resilience, look no further than this episode. I have the pleasure of speaking with Melanie Luca Taylor. She is a seasoned professional who has successfully navigated the corporate landscape for over 25 years. Armed with an MBA, executive leadership certification, a wealth of hands-on experience, and personal challenge, which provides a unique perspective, Melanie is on a mission to redefine leadership by elevating emotional intelligence. Her journey is a testament to the continuous learning and growth, marking Melanie as a true beacon of inspiration and resilience. Beyond her academic achievements, Melanie has etched her mark as a published author and speaker. Her international best-selling book, Voices of the 21st Century, And her engaging TEDx talk showcases her ability to seamlessly blend heartfelt narratives with humor, providing both entertainment and valuable insights to captivated audiences. I truly loved this conversation with Melanie, and I'm so grateful for her to share her journey and her wisdom in this episode. Enjoy. Well, welcome, Melanie Licky Taylor, to the podcast. I cannot wait to have this conversation. And we're just chatting, and I know this is going to be something that's so meaningful to so many people. So, thank you so much for being here. Well, thanks for having me, Kelly. I'm excited to be able to, you know, just share my message and and hopefully help a few people along the way. I think you definitely will. And I, what I would love to start with, because I found it just so impactful, and I think it'll really give the audience some background is just to understand your story. And and if you don't mind just sharing some of that, I think it'll really just give it some of that impact of understanding how powerful your message is. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like I've lived a couple of different lives, to be honest, um, at this point. But, um, you know, my background, I, I started in corporate at the age of 18 years old. Like I, I started then, right. And that's, that seems crazy now. Um, but it was, um, it was really great because I learned a lot from a lot of different people. Um, it was very challenging, you know, to be the youngest in a group of, um, quite frankly, much older men. Um, so it was, it was a challenge, but I had to learn very quickly. And as as I'm doing that, you know, I have this, um, this eye disease that I was born with and it's a progressive disease as well. So it's something where, you know, you could be born with 20, 20 vision, but, um, by the time you're in your seventies, you're completely blind. So it's this progressive disease. It's hereditary. And so I was dealing with that in the background, all at the same time of being a mom and being a wife. And, um, you know, we were foster parents and going to get my degree. And so I kind of did all the things at one time um, because that's who I am. So, uh, you know, I think it's just, it's an interesting story around just being able to do all the things while still making sure that you're being true to yourself. Um, because that is really something that I, that I had to do, um, you know, with this eye disease, it's really important that you prepare for, 
you know, what will possibly happen in your future? You know, I saw my grandfather go blind. My dad is almost blind. You know, I have had to stop driving. Um, so it's one of those things where you just, you have to constantly reinvent yourself. You have to constantly be prepared for what's coming next. And so, you know, prioritizing what, what has to happen is really important. Uh, absolutely. And so I know you said that you can be born with 2020 vision. When, at what point did you know that you then had this progressive disease? You know, I think I've always known because I saw my grandfather and my father and my uncles and my brother. And like, I've, I've seen all these men in my family kind of deal with this my entire life. So when I, you know, got my first pair of glasses at the age of five, I kind of just assumed that that was probably going to be my future, even that young. Um, but I wasn't officially diagnosed until I was 16. Um, and then, then it kind of hits you, right? You're in high school, you're, you know, I was playing sports, I was playing tennis. I was, you know, it's like, how long am I going to be able to do this kind of thing? And, and it kind of, you know, it's, it's hard to think that way when you're a teenager, you know, because most teenagers, and I can attest to this since I've had three, mm -hmm. um, most of them don't have a perspective long-term, right? It's like, what can I do today? And what can I, you know, focus on today? And having a long-term perspective was just a completely different thing that I, that I had to have even as a teenager. Yeah. Can you, do you mind just diving into that a little bit more? Because it, I can imagine if you're seeing the people in your life who are further along dealing with some of these really tough and challenging things, and then you know that that's kind of your future. Can you talk about some of what your experience was when you're seeing almost like your future playing out? Yeah, it, it came in little bits, you know, mm -hmm. like, um, I was a softball player, so throwing the ball and completely missing that someone was in my peripheral, right? Mm -hmm. Like I've hit somebody with a softball, mm -hmm. um, you know, little tidbits like that come your way or mm -hmm. when you miss a stair or when you run in, you know, trip over a curb or whatever, it brings you back to remembering, mm -hmm. okay. This is, this is what I'm going to have to deal with. And then you see, you know, your grandfather not be able to see his grandchildren or, mm -hmm. you know, you see your dad who had to reinvent himself as well. Like he, he was a delivery driver. Well, that's not going to be able to continue. So he went back to school and he got his teaching degree and he became a teacher, but then that became too difficult. And so he had to go do something else. So you, you see these little tidbits coming at you that, bring you back to the present of, of acknowledgement, right? Mm -hmm. It's not something you really thought about every day, mm -hmm. necessarily all the time. It's just those, those little things that came at you that, that then set off that bell of acknowledgement. Okay. This is, this is just a sign of things to come. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one thing you said, it really just stuck out to me is you said reinvent yourself. And that's, that's such a huge thing. And I, it's so ironic you said that because I literally was listening to the Ed Milet podcast this morning he, and his episode was about that, how his, you know, six-year-old was, was when he turned seven, there was no longer a six-year-old. It was now a seven-year-old. He had to reinvent himself as a seven-year-old. And we do this throughout our life. We reinvent yeah. ourselves, but some people stop reinventing themselves and kind of get stuck. Can you talk about how knowing that you have this progressive disease, how did that impact you as far as reinventing yourself and moving yourself in a different direction throughout the course of its progression? Are you the person who says yes, even though you want to say no? Are you the person who puts your own needs and wants last behind the demands of your work and everyone else in your life? If you answered yes to any of these, you may be self-abandoning and it does not come without a cost. If you want to know if you're self-abandoning for achievement, take my free quiz in the show notes. Yeah, um, really had to, right? Because there have just been things along my life that I just couldn't do anymore, right? Mm -hmm. I, you know, a good example recently is I can no longer drive. So mm -hmm. it started off with I couldn't drive at night because I really couldn't see at night. And it, it causes me more anxiety. It causes me to con be concerned about safety and everything else. And that's, that's so not worth it. Mm -hmm. Um, And then it turned into not being able to drive at all because my peripheral vision is so gone that, that that's not safe. Mm -hmm. Um, I was an event manager 
for a lot of years. And so can't really, I mean, I could do it, but not to the best of my ability. And so I needed to change my career. You know, there's these, I, I've been required to reinvent myself because of the disease. Right. But it's also kind of a part of who I am, mm -hmm. you know, even at, um, you know, I told you I started a corporate at 18. By the time I was 28, I was like seeing a coach and saying, what do I want to be for the rest of my life? Like, I don't know. I, you know, fell into this when I was young and, um, I don't know what I want to be for the rest of my life. And I'll never forget what she said to me because it really was something that I hadn't even taken into consideration was she said, why do you have to just be one thing? Like mm -hmm. we tell kids, they, they need to figure out the one thing they need to, you know, go into and be and, and she's like, why do you have to be one thing? And it stuck with me. It really did. So I created this vision board of all the things I wanted to accomplish in my life. You know, whether it was before my eyesight got so bad or even after my eyesight got so bad. But, um, you know, and and I think having a vision for the things that you want to be mm -hmm. uh, kind of helped push me, push me towards continuing to reinvent myself. Oh, I love that. And what a great gift that she gave you to realize that you're not going to be pinholed into one thing. Like you can be so many things. And I think that's like, that is huge. Like, because it's so easy to be like, I am this. And you define yourself as your occupation or being a just, you know, being a mom or like you define yourself as one thing, but like it, you're so correct. And she's so correct. It's like, you are such a versatile being. Yeah. You have so many levels and it's like, everything does not have to be black and white. Like we have so many layers of our being. And if we, we really need to do. Those, yeah. I yeah, love it. really do. And I think it's too, it's true too, that like I'm, I'm multi-passionate. One thing does not drive what I, my motivation, you know, I, I love being a mom. I love now being a grandma. Actually, I love, you know, going to school. Like I'm a lifelong learner. I continue to go to school. I love to work. I love, you know, crafts and, you know, there's just like a million things that I actually am passionate about. And so to pin you hold yourself into one little thing, it just, it was so true. Like I, I had been struggling with that through my twenties. It was like, what, do, what do I want to be for the rest of my life? I kind of fell into marketing, which is great. And I, I was good at marketing. I liked marketing, but like, and it was a great career, but it's, it's, it was so weird to me to, to think about just being this one thing. And when she said that to me, it was almost like giving me permission to go and do a zillion other things, whatever it is I wanted to do. And I didn't need that permission, but it was not something I, that, that just came to me. It just really wasn't. So mm -hmm. it really was a gift. And I, I credit her with that because it really led me on a path of just accomplishing so many other things mm -hmm. in my life that I don't think I ever would have accomplished mm -hmm. had that permission not been given. Yeah. And that's such a huge word because I, I, I is so true. Like, you know, when you like feel like, well, I can't people, some people will cut off things before they even try because somehow internally you don't feel like you have permission to actually do that. And the fact that like, I love that you said that word, because if you, for anyone who's listening, if you felt that permission to kind of release yourself into something, it's such a liberating feeling to be like, oh, wait, I never even thought about that. I didn't realize, like, I didn't realize that was an option. Like, okay, now let me pursue that. But sometimes we can get so stifled in thinking this is the way we do it. This is the only path. And, and until someone points out that there's another path and we can try that, like, it, it is right. like, so can be very stifling and feel like you're stuck in a place. Yeah. Well, and I think we kind of do it to ourselves in some ways too, right? Yeah. Cause you, you know, it's natural to be in your little circle, you mm -hmm. know, your little community, your, your best friends and your family, and then going out a little bit further, your, maybe your church community or your, or your neighborhood and going out a little further, maybe the, all the people you work with, whatever it is, that little community, you get stuck in that. And the expectations of everybody else coming at you of, of who they think you are mm -hmm. kind of get stuck in your head as well. And, and what they think you should do and what they think you should be. And then you kind of say that to yourself too. Sometimes it's like, okay, well, if they don't think I can be that, then why do I think I can be mm -hmm. that? When the reality is, is you, you know, yourself the best, mm -hmm. right. And you can't listen to what other people 
people's expectations are of you, have expectations for yourself and decide what that future needs to look like for you. And let's face it, no one knows the future, right? But you can still prepare and you can still plan. I knew at some point I wasn't going to be able to be an event manager. I knew that, right? And I, so I went to school and I got other certifications and I got other education and I, I did, you know, like little things on the side that got me other experience and other areas and um, met other people and expanded my network. And so I, I really did set out to prepare for that transition. Now, not all transitions are, are able to be prepared for, but that doesn't mean that it's the end of days. And I think we all kind of think that when something really big happens in your life, it's like doom and gloom sets in. It's like, this is not what I wanted. This is not the path I planned on. Um, but that's when resilience kicks in and that's when, you know, your logical thinking comes in and, and being able to just set that aside and say, okay, here's how we move forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Incredible. And I want to like go into that a little bit more because I can imagine, you know, someone was given that news, especially at 16, when you're, you know, you're so young, it could very much go a very different direction where you are focused on everything you can't do. Or even when you started losing your ability to drive, you, you could very much get stuck in what you're lacking or what you're losing. Yeah. How did you navigate that where you started looking at what can I gain? How can I transition? How can I transform? How do you navigate that? Because it can be very someone, and it may be for someone listening, maybe it's not eyesight, but maybe it's something else that's going, a, a loss of relationship or a loss of a loved one or, um, you know, a, a sick child or something. It could be something that is a huge loss in your life. And you could very much take that and look at just the loss. But how do you start to navigate where you look at, okay, this is what it is. How do, and then how do you move into a direction that you start to heal from that? Yeah, I think first it's just accepting the situation for what it is, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's not resigning to it. I talk about the difference between acceptance and resigning. Uh, to me, resigning means it is the negative outlook, right? The the resigning is, okay, this is my situation and nothing I can do about it and just whatever. You know, it's it's a it's like I'm not even gonna attempt to to solve the problem or to move forward. That's to me resignation. Mm -hmm. And I've never, ever, ever done that with my eyesight because mm -hmm. I I really kind of compare it to other things to be on and other people, to be honest. Um, you know, when you give, you feel better about yourself. That is, that is just why people give. And I think the same thing is in this situation. It's there are people in far worse situations than me, like, to be honest with you, right? I, I don't compare challenges because we all have our challenges and they all feel very personal to us, no matter what it is. Right. So, but for me, I'm alive. I'm healthy. I'm happy. You know, I have friends, I have family, I have, you know, I have all these other things not having my eyesight, that's, that's okay. Like, it's okay. You know? Yeah. Some days it really is hard. I, I can't lie about that. You know, there are days when all I do is just kind of cope with it. You know, if I, if I can't drive and get to where uh, an appointment that I need to get to, or if, you know, I ran into a pole, which mm -hmm. has definitely happened on the street, you know, or someone, to be honest, the things that probably hurt me the most is when someone else says something to me about it. Like when, when they're rude about it, right? If I run into them accidentally and I apologize and then they're rude to me in return, that probably hurts me more than the poll does. Right. Um, but I think for me, it's, it's that acceptance of this, this is my situation. Okay. Right. Okay. What can I do? that is going to make me feel better about it. And for that, I, you know, give my services to somebody else. I can still read. So I read for the blind or, Hey, I can, you know, still do coaching, which is what I do for young women. Like I, I can help young women be more confident and resilient in their lives. Right. So for me, it's that giving as well as just recognizing and accepting that 
I won't be able to do everything. And that's Mm -hmm. an okay thing. There are still so many other things that I can do. Ah, Such a a beautiful message there. Just that the acceptance of it, because it's like, if you're always fighting it, resisting it, you're going to continue it. So it is, I think it's beautiful and it can be applied to so many things, just accepting a situation you can't control, but then talking about how you can help others that is tremendous because when you get out of your own world and realize that like you still have so many gifts and you're here for a reason and there are things that you uniquely are qualified for now like amazing like well and I think everything. that's what that's the encouragement I would give everyone who's mm-hmm. dealing with their problems I think as women especially mm-hmm. we do not ask for help very well We do not go to our community of people and share with them the challenges that we're really having. I've talked to so many women who are like, you know, someone I knew pretty well would tell me something like, oh, my son is addicted to whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like, I had no idea Mm -hmm. because they, they try to deal with it themselves thinking Mm -hmm. no one else will understand. No one else knows how to handle this for me. They can't give me advice or even if they could give me advice, it's coming from a place that they don't understand. And I think part of my message is you don't, I don't have to be talking to somebody who has the same disease I have to relate to their challenge, right? Because even though I've never had um, like, let's give a good example. I have a friend who had a child pass away. I've never had that experience in my life, but I can empathize with the feeling that they have and what they're going through and, and be a friend to them. And I think far too many women don't do that. They don't think that they have a community of people who can actually understand what they're going through. Mm -hmm. And I, I would encourage women to start talking about it, start to hot, like really have a conversation about it because I think it'll, it'll open your eyes to the fact that more people understand your situation than you thought they did. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You're so right. It's like the, the silent struggle and so many people are just going through things and mask it very well. You you still have people who are very highly productive, high functioning and will show up and do all the things, but then it's behind closed doors. What is actually going on? And it's like, if we only keep the conversation surfacing and we don't allow people in, then Right. We'll never be able to actually get that help and 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 accept the help. And I think that can be really hard. I know you, you talked about that. It's like accepting the help can be so challenging, especially if you are someone who is that self-sufficient go-getter person. It can feel like such a right. vulnerability to be like, this is more than I can handle right now. And I need right. something. Well, and it perpetuates yeah. loneliness. Yeah. Community, right. It just mm-hmm. perpetuates that loneliness and you don't have to feel lonely. Yeah. In the challenge that you have, you know, I, I belong to a group for the eye disease that I have. And, um, I hate to say it, but you mentioned it earlier, you know, where, you know, how did you, you know, have a, a positive out, outlook on this? And there's so many, uh, parents that post in this group about, my son or daughter was just diagnosed, you know, how how their life is like really upset about how they think their life is going to be and how are they going to have a job and how are they going to, you know, be people and productive in society. And it's like, whoa, whoa, (laughs) you know, this is, it's not a death sentence. We're, we're okay. You know, we, we just learn to live with our normal and it's not the same normal as other people. I don't see the same way that other people see, but it's still a normal, it's a normal for us. And so I think, you know, acceptance is so important and not having that outlook of this is the worst thing that could happen to someone. It's really not. And most challenges are not that maybe not all, but most of them are not. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's such a great point too, is like when you, you're talking about the parents that are talking about their kids, it's like when you have those beliefs, those beliefs can very much be transmitted onto your child. And now you're going to have a child who's living in fear, thinking that they are then going to be very limited their whole life. And if you think you're going to be limited, 
it's like, it yeah. kind of can happen like that. that like, mindset. Well, so yeah, that is, it all right. starts with your mind. So as if you think that is a limitation, you think your life will only be at a certain level Small. It mm-hmm. unfortunately will, if you continue on with that mindset. So that I right. think having these conversations and recognizing and seeing what you're accomplishing and what you've done, it will hopefully, and in, hopefully inspire other people to be like, wow, I didn't realize what was possible. Like this is, it is possible to have a huge fulfilling life and, and take this as a gift and help others in a tremendous yeah, way and, and mm-hmm. accomplish a lot, right? Like yeah. really a couple that, that vision board I talked about, mm-hmm. I completed it by the time I was like 40, you wow. know? And, and so now I have to write a new one, Yeah, <laughs> but, but you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, there are a lot of things you can accomplish. Maybe it's not the exact thing Mm-hmm. that you were hoping to accomplish but that doesn't mean there aren't adjacent things to accomplish mm-hmm. and I think that's it, it's just having the mindset that there are so many things out there that you could do mm-hmm. you know why why focus on the things that you can't do right 100%. I, I certainly can't play tennis anymore that is not a reality right mm-hmm. but I can still go to the gym I can still, you know, walk on a treadmill. I can still, you know, lift weights. I can still do things. Um, I can still watch tennis. I can, you know, so there are still things that I can do that are adjacent. And I think that is something that too many people get stuck on is, well, I can't do this one thing now. And that's what's made me so angry. Yeah. And when the reality is, is open your mind up to the things you actually can do. Mm-hmm. And the things that you can accomplish regardless. Mm-hmm. And I think that starts to make you feel like you're more productive and you're, mm-hmm. you're more independent. And um, so that's, that's definitely my wish for anyone who's going through a big challenge is just kind of accept the situation and then really plan on how you're changing that, right? Prepare mm-hmm. for that change, prepare for that transition mm-hmm. Um while at the same time coping every day with that challenge that you have. Yeah, huge. And that's, I love that, you know, about your TED talk, the accept, prepare and cope. You talk about that. And it's like, th- those are such beautiful things because I think it's very realistic, you know, accepting that and it can be for any challenge, but also preparing and do everything in your power that you can with curiosity and expansion. And then, cope with the things that maybe you can or are challenging because that that's life with everything too. So I love that model because it's so realistic. It's not saying everything is rainbows yeah. and butterflies. You know? rainbows. No. <laughs> yeah, it's like you're still recognizing there are going to be challenges and you're going to have the ups and downs and that's with everything in life, right, but right. it's how can you make the most of it and help yourself be expansive in the process. So I absolutely love that model. I think that's such a huge way, like hopefully someone who listening will take that and be like, okay, what is something I'm challenged with right now and how can I accept it? And then prepare for something great in my life and then cope with the things that are challenging. So yeah, it's not that. about being positive every day. That's yeah. just not reality. Yeah. Right. Let's be honest. It's just not. And yeah. I, as much as I do feel like I have a positive outlook, I'm not positive every day as mm-hmm. much as I, you know, I'm just not being real about it. And um, I think as women, we're kind of taught you're supposed to smile and put on that facade and be happy every day and, and not let anybody see the cracks. Mm-hmm. And reality is that's just not real. It's not real. We all have cracks. We all have the days that are difficult. Mm -hmm. We all have pressures that are put on us. Um, And especially as women, we handle a million things at one time. So, Mm -hmm. you know, how can you really cope with all of that while you're still having this acceptance of your situation and continuing to move forward? Because that's really all it is. It's about moving forward. Mm-hmm. One little step at a time is still yeah. progress. It's mm-hmm. still progress. May not be as much as you want to make in a day, but it's still progress. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And that's, a, you know, just recognizing that those small steps and having the appreciation for how far you're coming, not necessarily the expectation. If you can replace expectation and appreciation, it changes everything in your life. And I love how you talk about the cracks. There's actually a quote, I think it's by Rumi, but the cracks are where the light comes in. So it's like those really tough moments, those really big challenges that you're faced with is really where the biggest growth comes in. If you can just allow yourself to 
uh, see that in yourself. If and you can so, use it, right? Yeah. It's about using yeah. it. It's about just accepting it's yeah. there and then use it for, for a positive outcome. It yeah. is possible, right? Yeah. I think there are too many people who just don't see the possibility, right? It was it was almost like like the coach said to me, hey, why be one thing? It's like, I couldn't see that for yeah. myself, Yeah, you know? And we all get kind of stuck in our own mindset. Mm -hmm. And so- you know, find someone who's going to open that crack a little bit mm -hmm. for you, like reach out to people and, yeah. and talk about the challenge and, and let somebody in to, who can really show you and maybe give you that one little tidbit that mm -hmm. opens you up and figure and helps you figure out how to move forward. Yeah, hundred percent. Cause it really is sometimes just getting an, a second pair of eyes. That's not living yeah. in your story. Like everyone can see such things clear from the outside perspective. And it's like, yeah. sometimes it is that one sentence you're like, Oh my gosh, it's like mind blown. And then you never see life the same way. And it's like, right. you know what your coach did for you. Like, it's amazing. Yeah. Now, now it's like reliving your life in a different way. It's like, it's like, if you read a book 10 years ago and you go back to the same book, you're like, Oh my gosh, I see things so different in that book yeah. because yeah. you are literally different at that time. That's right. So, and that's yeah. a good thing. That's a, good it is. Thing. You know, exactly. I have yeah. grown so much for so many reasons, yep. but in my twenties, I really was stuck. I, I was yeah. like, I have, I have my career decided for me already. I have, you know, I'm married at this time. That's set. I have a daughter at this time. That's set. Like, like I felt like my world was so small. And, and again, that one little sentence just changed completely everything that I wanted to accomplish and everything that I did accomplish over the next two decades. So I think that's it. I need to do that for other people because it's really okay. It's okay. The challenge that you have is okay. Um, and it's, it's just something to work with and work through that's yeah. what it is. work yeah. with and work through. It's beautiful. And I, and I also love to like, have you talked about like, it's not this big cosmic shift. It's like a little shift. And then you figure it out there and then you do a little bit more. And then gradually you become a different person through all those little shifts. But it's not like this big overnight process. It's just taking the next step forward that that in the next door that's open for you. Well, and as I work with with young women, I I, I have someone I'm working with now who really kind of got stuck because she didn't feel like like she was making enough progress, like the progress seems so big, you know, to make. And, um, you know, we talked about little steps, like just take one step forward. That is still progress. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we get stuck in how big the challenge really is that we don't find the ways to make those small improvements, even if it's every day, just one little thing, you know, if you have social anxiety, you know, find one thing, one small thing that takes you out of your, your comfort zone every day and, and it will improve. Right. Um, but I think, I think that's the challenge is just one step forward. You don't have to make big strides. It's, just break it up into little pieces. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. And I, it's, it seems simple, but like when you actually apply this to your life, so you're hard. like, it, is, it can be, but so like, hard. I think it's such a beautiful message. Where you're like, okay, that was a good enough step for right now, you know? And it's like, yeah. give yourself grace because if you're always feeling like it's not enough, like you're only going to focus on that. So celebrate those little steps. And I think that's such a beautiful tip for someone who maybe is listening to us and, and, and is feeling very stuck. So if you can start yeah. recognizing those steps. And just as far as like, if someone is listening, they're like, I am that 20 year old that is feeling stuck. My life feels like it's stifling. What's something that you would recommend them do right now in this moment that could help them just see something differently? Yeah, I think it's, it's write down what your goal is, right? What, what is the goal, right? What, why are you stuck? Like it's, what are you trying to achieve that makes you feel stuck? right? That you haven't been able to achieve because that's usually what it is. It's I, I know I need to do something, but I can't seem to figure out how to do that thing. So that's why I feel stuck. Mm -hmm. So write down whatever that goal is, right? Um, it, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's, I really want to move to a new city 
to and get a new job and and build a life in this new city. Okay. That seems like a really big thing, especially if you're young 20s. It feels like a really big thing to do. So what are the little things that you can do now that that will help you reach that goal in a certain amount of time, right? Maybe it's okay, I need to start looking for jobs in that in that city, right? And start applying for jobs. And then how do I do that? Just like back it up, like back it up and say, okay, well, if I put my resume together, um, then I have a start. And if I talk to a career coach, maybe I have a start there. Um, so you, you kind of take that big goal and you break it down into little areas and then just kind of back it up from there. I think that's, people feel kind of, um, really accomplished when they can check things off their list, like physically check, like physically write it down. This is my goal. And here are the steps. Let me check it off when I've done it. You will have such a sense of accomplishment to move forward that you won't feel as stuck anymore because you see all these check marks starting to happen and that even if that was a really really big goal you've started to make progress towards it mm -hmm. and you will you will naturally feel like you are not stuck anymore and that you are having a sense of accomplishment mm -hmm. I love that. Such a great recommendation. And is it really is like you build that momentum every time you have a check mark. And then it's like, you're like, well, that wasn't so bad. And hey, that yeah, wasn't so hard. Like, <laughs> yeah. And it's amazing. Like, and I love how you, you talk about breaking it down because it is when you can see the steps and have it written out, your brain can just conceptualize it so much better. So I, I love that. I love that recommendation. And I think writing it out is super important though. Yeah. Don't, don't put it on your phone, yes. which I know a lot of 20s do god love uh -huh. you um <laughs> but don't put it on your phone write it out on an actual piece of paper with an actual pen and put it somewhere you'll see you know in your room where on the refrigerator wherever but mm -hmm. give yourself a constant reminder that oh these are my goals and oh these are the steps and let me check that off now do it physically because if you don't do it physically if you just do it in your head you will continue to be stuck you will continue to feel like it is just too big of a problem to get to. It really is the physical writing it down that helps you move that one step forward. Yeah. And just, I love that having those visual cues throughout the day because it fits in your phone. Next minute you're on Instagram and you're scrolling and, and then you forget right. what you're actually yeah, trying all to about that. It's so, there. Like yeah. it's just gone. Right. Yeah. And <laughs> I've done the same thing. I'll be honest. I think like, we're all I've guilty. Yep. <laughs> but but writing it down and putting it somewhere that you will see, you know, at least a couple times a day, even if it's subconsciously that you've seen it, it will continue to help you feel as if you are making progress. Love so. it. Such a I great tip. And I hope for anyone listening, just do that. You know, after you're done listening to this episode, do it right now and, <laughs> and put it somewhere, bathroom mirror, wherever you are, because that is going to be a game changer for you. So I love that tip. Really well. Yeah. And for someone who wanted to work with you, connect with you, where can they find you? Um, you can email me. Um, and that's Melanie, uh, dot L dot Taylor at gmail.com. So you can email me, you can check out our website at, um, learning design um, either one of those, you can find me there. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook, wherever you would like to find me, but that's, I really love hearing from people, um, even if it's just a quick email to say, hey, you know, heard the episode and really, you know, could use um, some ideas on writing down my steps. Mm -hmm. Great. Let's do that. Right. So definitely reach out and just, you know, let's let's chat. I love it. I love meeting new people. I love it. And I'll put everything in the show notes. So if you're listening to this and you're in the car or something, don't worry. Everything's going to be right in the show notes so you can connect with Melanie. And I just want to thank you so much for sharing your story and just inspiring people to live life greatly and in a very expansive way. So thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you, Kelly. I hope, you know, your audience gets a lot out of it. And I, I really hope that start accepting some of the the places that they're in and and just moving forward that's, yeah that's what it's about. 
Absolutely. And I think, I think for sure, many people are going to take this and take some of those messages and just become different people after this. So I, I really appreciate being here and thank you so much for everyone who's listening. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Rewiring Health. I hope you found our conversation both enlightening and empowering. If you enjoyed today's episode, please subscribe to Rewiring Health so that you never miss an update. Also, I would love to hear your thoughts. If you could take a moment to rate and review the show, it would mean the world to me and help others discover the power that we all have within us to create change and create the life that we truly, truly desire. Thank you so much for spending your precious time with me and sharing the energy of the show.